Uh, Nvidia sent me a key for the new Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty DLC, which features Nvidia's new DLSS 3.5 and upgraded ray tracing overdrive. RTO Overdrive uses full ray tracing, so the game is entirely ray traced now, which boasts a huge visual jump. And DLSS 3.5 is NVIDIA's latest DLSS, which features new ray reconstruction, which basically uses AI to improve the quality of ray traced effects, making reflections, global illumination, and shadows more detailed than ever before. That's the marketing spiel. That's that's what NVIDIA want you to say, but is it is it something we should actually get excited about? Or or is it just buzzwords to sell new tech? Now, before I even talk about what ray tracing overdrive is, I think I should probably first explain what ray tracing is as just a base sort of rendering way. Rendering way? So typically now with games, um, lighting is done using rasterized lighting. This is how it's commonly done, where from your camera's perspective, it analyzes the scene and turns that into a 2D image. From that 2D image, all the sort of shapes and geometry of the game are looked at, all the properties are evaluated, and then all the lighting, the shading, is done through post-processing. So yeah, all this lighting is kind of just done by eye, by the designer, by the developer. What ray tracing does though, is it tries to simulate real life lighting. A light will send out some, some rays of light, those will bounce off things and then into our eyes. And that's how we perceive light and color from lights bouncing, bouncing beams about and then it goes into our eyes and finally you go, oh, color, nice, cool. Now, obviously simulating every light ray in, in the world or in the game would be extremely hard to do. That's, that's infinite bounces, basically. It's infinite rays in, bouncing infinitely time. You can't simulate that. So for ray tracing in a video game, we basically do this process, but in reverse, where instead of the lights shooting the beams out and bouncing around and then into the eyes, we instead shoot rays out of the camera. And so these, these rays are shot out, they bounce around randomly, and that's how we calculate the ray tracing in a game. Doing this process of shooting beams out from the perspective of the game into the scene generates this really noisy image. The light beams bounce about in random directions. You get this super noisy, almost random looking image, which kind of doesn't look like anything until you basically run it through an algorithm, which denoises it. It's, it's, it's magic. It's magic at this point to me. Um, or maths. It's magic or maths. You decide which one it is. So the main, the main problem with like ray tracing is it is tech that's been developed over over the course of several years, some multiple, multiple years. So it's kind of patchwork together. It, it's kind of a mess. You've got different processes for every kind of ray tracing you can imagine. So, you know, you've got processes for calculating the shadows, calculating ambient occlusion, global illumination and reflection. It's all stitched together. It's not... It's not efficient because it's all done in, in parts, uh, which on one hand is good because it means developers can sort of choose which elements they want to implement and, you know, discard the stuff that they don't think is important. But because it's all in different steps, it's just not an efficient workflow at all. You know, they don't have to incorporate everything. If they don't want global illumination because it's too taxing, they don't have to include it. If they want to heavily focus on reflections, they can do that. But it means they have to specifically choose what assets in the game have these ray tracing properties. Even in Cyberpunk, when that first came out, only select lights would actually have 
ray tracing. You know, not every light source in the scene would have ray tracing. That's how it was optimized for best visuals and performance. So yeah, a lot of games up to this point have been stuck in this awkward spot between using rasterized lighting and ray tracing on just a select few bits. I am the one, the way your son don't need a gun to get respect up on the street. Under the sun, the bastard son will pop the clock to feed himself and family. All right, so now we're having ray tracing overdrive which is also known as path tracing, also known as RTX Global Illumination, also known as... Can't do, uh, you're not allowed to do that, it's a private property. Oh, is it? Yes. Sorry, I didn't know. <laughs> all right, so apparently that's all, that's all private property, which I can't, I can't go on. Anyway, um, so yeah, basically now we've got full ray tracing, which is the same, it's the same base premise as before, right? It's still ray tracing, but now rather than having that patchwork system of everything being in different parts, just in one step. It's a lot more efficient. So yeah, that means now everything in the scene is ray traced. Every light source, every shadow, global illumination from the start. Images are looking very nice, very nice from the start. However, it is still ray tracing. Just, just because the process is more efficient, doesn't mean it's not still very demanding for a PC to run, but God does it look good. So yeah, now we have full ray tracing, which looks beautiful. However, it's still barely playable on even like the most specced out PC. Even if you've got the latest graphics card, you're still gonna struggle to run it at, at decent frame rates. Full ray tracing is, is taxing, but Nvidia have made it possible with AI. So yeah, Nvidia has been developing this tech, DLSS, which is deep learning super sampling. It's essentially rendering the game at a lower resolution than using machine learning to upscale that image. And you know, the results are pretty, pretty good. It's kind of at the point now where I can't really tell the difference myself of an upsampled image versus a native resolution image. I have done a full video on the history of DLSS if you want to watch that. It's interesting, but that's the base premise of it. Anyway, now we have DLSS 3.5, also known as Ray Reconstruction for the marketing point of view, uh, which essentially takes the same sort of deep learning principles and applies that to ray tracing. Um, so yeah, with Ray Reconstruction, it basically reuses path traced information between frames. So it basically does this by looking at your game engine data, pulling information from like object shape, color, and motion and then using an algorithm to figure out what path trace information can be reused between the frames. So on each new frame of the game, your PC isn't having to brute force render a fully ray traced image. It's kind of sharing pixel information, reusing it in an optimal way. Remember that super noisy sample we saw earlier of like raw ray traced information? This is what the same scene looks like using this new sampling method. And it's, it's impressive. Being able to share that ray trace information to do this ray tracing for games, it, it's it's kind of it's kind of magic. It looks cleaner, it looks sharper. Ray tracing looks more realistic, and until until you start moving, and the more you move, the more it becomes an issue. The whole idea of close enough kind of goes out the window, and things like textures are just. Well, they just go to sh Basically, with the ray trace information being used between frames, the information isn't going to be perfect because it's moving and the AI basically can't do it perfectly. So it tries, it tries it's good enough, but fine textures just look smeared. I mean, at its best, maybe the images look a little over sharpened. You know, some, some edges look a little bit too overly highlighted. 
Sun Shadow is a little bit too overly dark, but, but at its worst, it basically looks like you've applied an oil filter in Photoshop. Now, I do think this issue is heightened in Cyberpunk because going through a city, there's a lot of fine details. You know, buildings have fine, sharp edges. They have defined windows. So it kind of makes it tricky. It's a very challenging game to try and use AI to predict where shapes are moving, especially when you're moving quick. So personally, I don't use this new ray reconstruction. I don't use DLSS 3.5. Now that could be because I'm on an older card. I'm on a 30 series, I'm on a 3080. It's not the latest tech. And so by default, I'm generating just less frames across the board. And I know the less frames an algorithm has to work with, the more blurry the results will be. So I'm sure if I'm on like the top dog card, maybe this artifacting won't actually be as bad. I mean, to be fair, it's also new technology. I remember when DLSS first came out, the results it used for upscaling were a bit blurry and kind of bad. But in an iteration or two, these problems were fixed. So this is this is step one. And it literally says this is, you know, experimental features. Have fun with it. But it's still in, you know, early prototypes, path tracing and AI machine learning. So you can't expect perfect results. That's all said, I am still running the game with path tracing enabled and getting around 50 to 60 FPS at 1440p, which is pretty, pretty insane, to be honest. And the only reason I can do this is because of mods. So with ray tracing overdrive enabled, it shoots these path trace rays out the camera, builds the scene fully ray traced, and all these rays bounce twice before the ray traced information is calculated. What this mod does though, is it reduces that bounce count to one. So basically the information isn't as accurately simulated. It's not perfect, but it's still a fully ray traced scene rather than partially ray traced, rasterized into some elements being ray traced. It's still fully ray traced, just with one less bounce, which <laughs> is a huge, huge improvement for performance and scenes still look a lot, a lot more realistic. They look, they look all bueno, also bueno. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm sure when fully ray traced games kind of become the norm, these kind of settings will just become native in games. You know, I, I won't have to download a mod to reduce the bounce count. I'm sure Nvidia will introduce RTX overdrive performance mode or something, whatever they call it. I'm sure down the line, options like this for fully path traced, fully ray traced games will have performance mode options. Anyway, it's cool tech. I'm a big fan of it. Uh, thanks Nvidia, just keep, keep it up. Keep up the cool tech.